Thank you for joining us for today's Central Moments. It's my joy to be with you this week and to share this time together. Have you ever heard the term miracle baby? It's a one that is used frequently in certain situations, and it usually implies uh, some form of deliverance or some form of unexpected uh, uh, deliverance of a baby and, uh, or a child. And that's what we're going to talk about today, one of the several miracle babies found in the Word of God. This story goes all the way back to the first chapter of First Samuel and involves a rather young Jewish couple. The husband's name is Elkanah, and he has two wives. One of them is barren, and her name is Hannah. If you know anything about the culture of that period, then you know that uh, barrenness was a personal shame and could be a family shame uh, in those situations. And so Hannah was very ashamed of being barren, wanted to satisfy her husband with children. And so God's word says that she prayed earnestly for a child. In fact, she was so desperate for a child that she actually made a very sincere vow to the Lord, telling the Lord, give me a son and I will give him to you for his entire life. Well, God did. He answered that prayer, gave Elkanah and Hannah a son. They named him Samuel, and true to her vow, she presented him in the house of the Lord to serve there without reservation. Let's read about it in chapter 3 of 1 Samuel, beginning our reading with verse number 1. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. Now, this simply means when Israel uh, came into the promised land, the wilderness tabernacle that had moved with them so frequently was erected rather permanently in a place called Shiloh. The high priest, Eli, served out of that same tabernacle, and that is where Hannah and Elkanah took Samuel to serve the Lord and to serve Eli there. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. The best and quickest way I can uh, define what that means is to say to you it describes a season of low spiritual tide in the land. There was no active prophetic voice. There wasn't much spiritual activity. Yes, I think the best way to describe it is a season of low spiritual tide. In verse 2, one night Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. That's the first time the Lord called after Samuel. And Samuel quite innocently recognized it uh, and thought it was the voice of Eli. Interestingly, Samuel was about 12 years old at this time, and God chose a way of speaking to Samuel that he could recognize that of a human voice that sounded so natural, he actually thought it was Eli. Again, the Lord calls in verse 6, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him, simply meaning that at 12 years of age, Samuel's spirituality was emerging, but was not yet uh, uh, fully mature. A third time in verse 8, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. 
So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Very good advice Eli chose to give Samuel. In fact, the advice to respond to the Lord with those words, speak, Lord, your servant is listening, really would prove to be advice of lifelong value. Now, there's a fourth time in verse number 10. This time, the Lord came and calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. Notice the presence of the Lord in this fourth occurrence, the call of God to Samuel. And this time Samuel knew how to respond. And he did. Today's story is about Samuel. Today's prayer time is about you. My encouragement for all of us is to learn to live our life with a longing for God's voice actively interacting with us in life. If we go through our life every day a calling out to the Lord and inviting him, speak, Lord, I am carefully listening. What a powerful tool we will have to make sure that our life is following his direction. Now, God, we ask for just that in the life of each one of us today, that we can live our lives in an attitude of listening for your sweet yet powerful voice showing us the way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 